Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And in this podcast, we're going to cover domain four of CISSP. Thanks for sharing a great response on my domain one to domain three podcast, and that motivate me to make the domain four podcast also. Now, those who are from GRC or they have experience on the data privacy side and all that, one thing you need to understand: domain four and domain three are literally a nightmare for them. I agree with that. So in domain four, we talk about communication network security because one thing you need to understand is you need to understand how it think how things works. If you don't know how things works, it is difficult for you to understand where it works. I will give an example. Until unless you don't know what is the difference in PAP and CHAP. Until unless you don't know how the PAP work, how the CHAP work, you don't know where it works. In which condition I will recommend CHAP. In which condition we will recommend PAP. So domain four, just memorizing concept will not help you. You really need to understand how things work. So domain four start with OSI model first, and as OSI, you need to understand all the seven layer of OSI. The layer one is physical, then data, the network, transport, session, presentation, application, and you really need to understand each and every layer functionality. Let's say example when I open a browser, I type https gmail dot com. I am actually interacting on application layer. From there, the data move to presentation layer. Presentation layer responsible for encoding and compressing data then move to session layer establishing a session then transport layer divide the data into segment <clears throat> then the data is further segment divided into the fragment and uh, we do create a packets on network layer where we assign the source ip destination ip then data link layer is divided into so two sub part one is called llc logical link control and one is called as a uh, logical link control and second is basically called as a this one uh, media access control and all your van technology works on data link layer and then from there we move data to the physical layer so understand in layman term let's say example you open some food aggregator app like it can be zomato or uber eat and all that so you are actually interacting on the application layer then you see the list of uh, restaurants that is a presentation layer you select one restaurant you set up the session when you open the restaurant you can see the list of menus that is a transport layer then you add the address which is called network layer you add the pin code which is a data link layer and then we have physical layer same thing network layer responsible for assigning a source ip destination ip and data link layer responsible for assigning the source mac and destination mac address now ipsec works on network layer uh, ssl tls works from presentation to transport layer and uh, major van technologies works on the data link layer so you should know uh, each and every layer in detail then we talk about the topology so we have a star topology tree topology ring topology the most secure one is mash topology so you should know that now when it comes to the physical layer we have a three type of media twisted pair fiber optic and co coaxial the the best cable for sending a sensitive data is fiber optic cable because it has a less attenuation on data link layer we creating a collision domain so to divide the collision domain we create a broadcast domain network layer has a two type of protocol ip and ipx <clears throat> major routing done on the network layer and it is responsible assigning a so, uh, source ip destination ip and we have a two type of ip ip version 4 ip version 6 you also need to understand there is a routing protocol called bgp bgp is the backbone of the internet then we talking about network classes it's starting from class a to class e class a start from 1 to 126 class b is 128 to 191 class c is 192 to 223 class d is 224 to 239 and class e is 242 to 240 to 255 from the first octet we identify the ip class ip is divided in two part public ip private ip then we talk about two, three type of networks internet which is simply you browse any sites on the internet then intranet by the lan you connect with your branch office and when the suppliers using a vpn to connect with your location that is called extranet transport layer is very important two protocols are there on transport layer tcp and udp protocol which one is faster tcp sorry udp which one is slower is tcp which one is more reliable tcp which one is less reliable udp so when you open first time youtube.com you are establishing connection on tcp but when you start playing a videos it is happening on udp now one thing also need to remember is whatever the protocol you use on the application layer it need to communicate through a particular port number <clears throat> because protocol is called as a set of rule like i am speaking english so english is a protocol by which you can understand so every protocol has a number 
So here in the transport layer, we categorize all the ports protocols into three categories: well-known port, registered ports, and dynamic ports. Well-known port ranges 0 to 1023, registered is 1024 to 49151, and dynamic port is 49152 to 65535. Then we have a session layer, session layer responsible for establishing a session. Any question talking about which layer responsible for creating, maintaining and tearing down the session is session layer. Which layer is responsible for encrypting data, encoding data, compressing data that is called presentation layer. And the data which is interact on the user is called as an application layer. Along with that OSI, we also have a TCP IP model. In TCP IP model, we have a four layers application transport internet and network access application is a combination of osi application presentation session transport of osi is also called transport here network of the osi here is called internet layer and data link and physical is called as a network access layer so you should know this now once we're done with the osi we move to the next part called network zones so what happened traditionally all systems part of the one zone whether it's a public facing server like dns web server or database or email server so if I consider database or uh, database server or email server, for me sensitivity is the priority. And if I consider web server or file server or web server or DNS server, criticality is my priority. If I configure everything with the one network and we have one firewall, then it is a problem. Because what happened is uh, all the traffic going through the one firewall and then from there it go to the internal network. Understand in this way, like in India, we have a two layer of security checks. One when you go to airport, one is the check, checking your board, boarding pass or tickets. And second is after collecting a boarding pass, checking your detailed security checks. But here we only have one firewall. If I consider the, the server, which is like uh, um, my database or AD will put more restrictions on the firewall. On the other side, if I keep, um, think about web servers and all that, it will impact the functionality. If I think from a web server point of view, if I reduce the rules, then attacker is easy for him to bypass. So that is why in the organization, we create the concept of DMZ, demilitarized zones. So now what happened, we have one firewall for the external facing side, all the traffic coming on that firewall, then it comes to DMZ, whatever the public hosting server we have, we can keep it in the DMZ like web server or DNS server. And then after that, we can have another firewall, which has a more security configuration. And then we can keep the internal network. So public facing server, we keep it in the DMZ and ultimate goal of DMZ is to protect the uh, external traffic to the internal. We also have a different type of converge protocols. F FCOE is you need to remember. MPLS is very important. So whenever uh, we're talking about label based forwarding, so the answer is MPLS. We also have a VoIP protocol. In VoIP, we have a three protocols you need to know. One is called H.323, SIP or RTP. SIP, you should set up the session. RTP, which is called as a, um, this is called secure real-time transport protocol used to carry the data on the SIP. It is very important you have to segregate the VoIP traffic from the uh, other IT traffic. Then we talk about Bluetooth. We have a three type of attacks in the Bluetooth, which is called blue snarfing, blue bugging, and blue jacking. And uh, then we talk about the wireless. So we have a four type of wireless security standards. One, one is called as the WEP. The key size is 64 bit, 40 bit is the key, 24 bit is IV. There's a dedicated coffee shot I have for that. Please check, check that. Use the algorithm, which is called RC4. The concern is after 5,000 packets, there is a possibility of IV has a repetition. Then we introduce WPA. In that we introduce an advanced security feature called TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. It's still using a RC4 uh, algorithm to encrypt the data. Then we introduce WPA2 in which we use AES and uh, use the CCMP to enhance the data security protection. Then we WPA3 which is 192 bits and they introduce a new algorithm which is called SI, simultaneous authentication of equal. So if you get a question which is more secure, WPA3 is definitely more secure. Then we talk about 802.1x EAP. So when you're having a multi customers and multiple access points, so I want to streamline them with the centralized authentication server. So now we have a multiple customers connecting to multiple access points. So access point itself will not do any authentication. Access point pass the information to radius. Radius will pass the information to active directory or um, certificate authority server. 
So today now you have seen that in the hotel we use the concept of captive portal. What is that? You connect with the Wi-Fi without any password, and then it redirect you to some kind of a login page where you enter the username password. But you cannot see the same in your house, right? Everyone comes, you share the same password. So this is how they use with the help of 802.1x, which is used for the wired and wireless authentication. Then we have our next part, which talk about type of certificates. We have a client certificate, which client provide to server to prove him I am your trusted client. Then we have a server certificate, which server provide to the client that I am your server, trust me. And we also have a S MIME. S MIME is a solution which is used to protect the email security. See what happens is when you send any email, when you attach any data in the email, so it will be converted into M I M E extension, MIME extension. So any email client can able to read the document. So 10 years back, when you receive any attachment, you have to first download the attachment and in, then you have to browse. But today you can directly open the attachment in the email itself because of the MIME support. But MIME send the data in the plain text. And that is the reason we introduce the concept of S MIME, secure multipurpose intern mail extension, which has a two major feature. One is called as a signed message and one is called as an envelope message. Signed message provide the integrity, sender authentication and non-reputation. On the other side, envelope message provide the integrity, sender authentication and confidentiality and they achieve with the help of RSA and AES. Next, we talk about securing network component. Here we talk about NAC, network access control. It is a solution which is used to differentiate between the authorized and unauthorized connection. Understand in this way, when we having a hybrid workforce or people carrying the device, when the device trying to connect to the network, the solution is there, which is called as a NAC. And one of the example of solution is Microsoft NPS, Network Protection System. So what the solution does is solution basically inspect the configuration of the system and check against a known configuration baseline. Actually, they check the health profile, whether the system has adequate baseline or not. If it match, they connect to the internal network. Otherwise, it can be moved to the restricted network. It is same like, you know, when the company has announced you to resume work from uh, office, they have hired the security guard to check on the day one. Hope you carry your vaccination certificate. So based on a vaccination certificate, they allow you to work on this particular office or you can move to some other zones. So NAC does the same thing. It differentiate between the, the device which has an appropriate updated health profile or not. And ultimately by this, we're trying to reduce the zero day attacks. Next important part, we got to talk about the firewall. It's very important for you to know that four type of firewall. The first is called as a packet generation firewall, very simple firewall, which inspects source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, but it's a stateless. Then we have a second generation firewall, which is called as application circuit level proxy. Now, context you need to understand is which will take more time. Application level proxy take time because it inspect the data and then it pass the information. And if you get a question around which is a most detailed inspection, so it is done by the application level proxy. Which one is faster? Circuit level proxy. Circuit level proxy works on the session layer, whereas application level proxy works on the layer seven. Then we have a third generation firewall, which is called as a stateful firewall, which maintain the information about state, source and destination, and manually we don't need to create a rule for both side and it works on the layer four. But today we use a next generation firewall which work from layer three to layer seven. So whenever we configure firewall on the internet side, we always configure basic firewall. So static packet filtering firewall is our best answer. Moving ahead, we also talk about the endpoint security. We have a NAT also. Ultimate goal of NAT is to hide your internal network from external. So we have a three type of NAT, static NAT, dynamic NAT, and PAT. Static is one to one, dynamic is one to many. Many to many and PAT is basically one to many. Ultimate goal of NAT is to hide your internal network from external. So this is the first part. Do let me know, shall I make a second part of the domain four? Thank you so much.